Varicose veins are a common finding in the lower extremities, and they're composed of dilated, tortuous, superficial veins that arise due to chronically elevated venous pressure. Varicose veins often predispose to poor wound healing and varicose ulcers. Patients with varicose veins may develop thromboembolism rarely. Generally, it's thought that varicose veins arise because of faulty venous valves in the superficial veins. And varicose veins are often associated with pregnancy. Raynaud's disease, or Raynaud's phenomenon, is a finding commonly seen in patients with mixed connective tissue disorders. Raynaud's is composed of decreased blood flow to the skin due to overactive arteriolar vasospasm in response to cold temperatures or even emotional stress. This is most commonly seen in the fingers and the toes. This finding is called Raynaud's phenomenon when it is thought to be secondary to a mixed connective tissue disorder such as systemic lupus erythematosus or Crest syndrome. Generally what you see in these patients is blanching or whitening of the distal tips of the fingers or the toes. Wegener's granulomatosis is a disease that is characterized by a triad of a focal necrotizing vasculitis, a necrotizing granulomatous state in the lung and the upper airway, and necrotizing glomerular nephritis of the kidney. The symptoms of Wagner's include hemoptysis, hematuria, nasal septum perforation, chronic sinusitis, otitis media, mastoiditis, cough, and dyspnea. It's important to remember that C. anca is a strong marker of the disease. And the chest x-ray may reveal large nodular densities composed of granulomas. On urinalysis, you will see hematuria and red cell casts. The treatment for Wegener's involves immune suppressants such as cyclophosphamide and corticosteroids. Some other ANCA positive vasculitides are first, microscopic polyangiitis. This is quite similar to Wegener's, but it lacks granulomas. P-ANCA, or protoplasmic anti-neutrophil cytoplasmic antibody, will be positive. Another vasculitis is primary pausiimmune crescentic glomerulonephritis, which is vasculitis limited to the kidney. Pausiimmune means paucity of antibodies, which will not show up positive on immunofluorescence. Churg-Strauss syndrome is a granulomatous vasculitis that is classified as an eosinophilic vasculitis. These patients also will have asthma and sinusitis, as well as skin lesions and a peripheral neuropathy, for example, wrist or foot drop. Churg-Strauss may also involve the heart, the GI system, and the kidneys. It is also P-ANCA positive. Sturge-Weber disease is a congenital vascular disorder that affects capillary-sized blood vessels. These patients will manifest and present with port wine stains on the face, as well as ipsilateral leptomeningeal angiomatosis, also known as intracerebral AV malformations. These patients will also develop seizures and early-onset glaucoma. hennig schonlein purpura is the most common childhood systemic vasculitis. This disease affects the small vessels, and the common triad of involvement involves the skin, the joints, and the GI tract. These patients will present with a skin rash on the buttocks and the legs with palpable purpura, as well as arthralgias, intestinal hemorrhage, abdominal pain, and melena. hennig schonlein purpura generally follows upper respiratory tract infections. These patients will have immune globulin A immune complexes, and it's associated with IgA nephropathy. Berger's disease, which is also known as thromboangiitis obliterans, 
is an idiopathic segmental thrombosing vasculitis of small and medium peripheral arteries and veins. It is classically seen in heavy smokers. Burgers affects small and medium-sized vessels, and the medium vessel diseases cause thrombosis and infarction of arteries. The symptoms of Burgers disease include intermittent claudication and superficial nodular phlebitis, as well as cold sensitivity, that is, Raynaud's phenomenon, and severe pain in the affected part. Burgers disease may also lead to gangrene and digit autoamputation. And the treatment for Berger's disease is simply to stop smoking. Kawasaki disease is primarily a pediatric disorder. This is an acute self-limiting disease of children that's caused by a necrotizing vasculitis, the cause of which is not well understood, of small and medium-sized vessels. Classically, this disease is associated with patients of Asian ethnicity, though it can occur in other races as well. The most important things to remember about Kawasaki disease is that these patients develop coronary artery aneurysms. They also develop very high fevers into the 104 degree Fahrenheit range and develop very congested conjunctiva and oral mucosa. These patients are classically called strawberry tongue. They often have swollen lymphadenitis, very painful uh, swelling in the neck, and they can also develop a disclamative skin rash on the palms and soles as well as the chest and face. The treatment of Kawasaki's disease is intravenous immune globulin, which suppresses the body's natural immune response. These patients are often given aspirin as well. This is one of the few times that it's considered safe to give young people aspirin, especially when you worry about RISE syndrome. Polyarteritis nodosa is an immune complex mediated transmural vasculitis with a fibrinoid necrosis which may occur. Polyarteritis nodosa affects small and medium arteries, typically it involves the renal and the visceral vessels but not the pulmonary arteries. The lesions in polyarteritis nodosa are of different ages on the pathology. The symptoms include fever, weight loss, malaise and abdominal pain, melena, headache, myalgia, hypertension, neurologic dysfunction, and cutaneous eruptions. 30% of patients with polyarteritis nodosa have hepatitis B seropositivity. These patients may present with multiple aneurysms and constrictions commonly seen on arteriograms. The treatment for polyarteritis nodosa is classically corticosteroids, cyclophosphamide, and other anti-inflammatory medications. Takayasu's arteritis, which is also known as pulseless disease, is the granulomatous thickening of the aortic arch and or the proximal great vessels. Takayasu's is associated with an increased erythrocyte sedimentation rate, and it primarily affects Asian females less than 40 years of age. It affects medium and large blood vessels, and the symptoms of Takayasu's include fever, arthritis, night sweats, myalgia, skin nodules, ocular disturbances, and weak pulses in the upper extremities. The mnemonic to remember is fan my skin on Wednesday. Temporal arteritis, also known as giant cell arteritis, is the most common vasculitis which affects the medium and the large arteries and usually branches of the carotid artery. Temporal arteritis is a focal granulomatous inflammation that generally affects elderly females. The classic presentation of temporal arteritis is a unilateral headache with jaw claudication and impaired vision. The impaired vision occurs usually because of an occlusion of the ophthalmic artery that may lead to irreversible blindness. Patients with temporal arteritis generally have an elevated erythrocyte sedimentation rate, and half of these patients may have systemic involvement with possible polymyalgia rheumatica. Polymyalgia rheumatica is a soreness of the proximal muscles that is classically associated with temporal arteritis. The treatment for temporal arteritis is high-dose steroids. This concludes our section on cardiovascular pathology.